The Seagull Project presents Mila the Healer by Carol Rocamora, adapted from the short story Life's Affliction by Anton Chekhov. There was no one in the village sadder than Mila Petrovna the day her husband died. <laughs> she was inconsolable. <laughs> Mama, please, please. Mila Petrovna, you mustn't. Her husband, Sergei Sergeyevich, was the district doctor. He wasn't a very handsome man, nor was he an exciting one. At least that's what they say. Yes. But he was a good doctor, an earnest one. I assisted him for years. Mm-hmm. You did. He worked every day of his life. Mm-hmm. And when he died... For God's sake... He devoted his life to others, and he couldn't even save himself. Oh, there, there, Mila Petrovna. What am I to do? My life is over. Over. She put on her dress of black, she wrapped herself in her shawl, <laughs> and sat by the window all day, weeping. But, Mila Petrovna, you have a daughter, saints be praised. She is your consolation. I'm here, Mama. Mama! But she paid her daughter no mind. In fact, she ignored her. All day long, she would sit by the window. She did. She did. For days and days. Eat something, Mila Petrovna. Eat something, I kept telling her. You did. You did. Yeah, look at this lovely cabbage soup I've made for you. But nothing could console her. What could I do? She wouldn't eat. Then, one day... Oh, come on. Anya! Anya! Yes, yes! It was Pavel, the night watchman. He was kicked by one of the horses. What are we to do? He's hurt. He's hurt. Don't look at me. I send all Sergei Sergeyevich's patients to the next village to see the doctor there. That doctor? He's a quack, a thief, a good for nothing. Oh, help me. Please, it hurts so. Misha, what are we to do? He's bleeding. I'm afraid to drive him to the doctor's, Mila Petrovna. It's at least four hours from here, and at night. I won't be sure of the way. And that wound, look how deep it is. It needs tending to, or else it might get gangrene. He might lose his leg. Let me look at him. What? Let me look at him. Well, what are you waiting for? Bring him over here. All right, all right. Bring me the bandages and the ointment, the one Sergei Sergeyevich always used. Oh. It's on the top shelf of the doctor's infirmary. Ah, but... Hurry! Mistress, okay. oh, mistress, okay. it hurts I so... I know it hurts. Mama, may I help? What can I do? Tell me. Never mind, Anya. Hurry, Avdotya. Go boil some water. Oh, and wait. I'll need some cloths. I'll get them. Hold on, man. Hold on. Oh, I'm much obliged, Mila Petrovna. I remember how your dear husband, the late doctor, used to... There, there. Save your breath. I just wanted to say that he... I'm here now. Here you are. Hurry! Hurry! <laughs> Steady, Pavel. Mama, I... Quiet! While I'm working, please. And she washed Pavel's wounds, applied the ointment, and bandaged his legs. She sat up all night by his bed. Mila Petrovna, I'm so grateful shh, for... Shh. Sleep now. Sleep. And that's how Pavel's wounds healed, thanks to Mila Petrovna. And so it was revealed to her that night, after days, weeks, months of mourning, Mila Petrovna had a new purpose in life. How does it feel this morning? Better. Much better. You've healed me, Mila Petrovna. Blessed be the memory of your husband, Sergei Sergeyevich. May his soul rest in peace. Why should you be so surprised? Can a wife learn at her husband's side? And from that day on, they called her... Mila the healer. Everyone in the village did. 
No longer did they have to travel miles and miles to see... That quack of a doctor in the next village. He charges two rubles a bandage. That's right, two rubles. And he doesn't even use ointment. He spits on his patients, that's what he does, and rubs his saliva in the wound, the miser, to save money. Soon, everyone from the village was coming to see Mila Petrovna. Ivan the stable boy with his wound from the plow blade. Nadia the laundress with burns from scalding water. Farapont the postman with his gout. Oh, the village is coming to her now. Twenty patients yesterday. Thirty-two today so far. I'm so worn out I can hardly stand on my two feet. Mama, you've been working day and night. Can't I help you? Stop bothering me, Anya. Oh, they used up all my opium. Imagine... Misha, you'll have to go to Yaroslavl for a fresh supply. Yes, Mila Petrovna. And I've heard that in Kostrovo there's an epidemic of dysentery. I'll need some quinine and some... She worked tirelessly. She wouldn't rest. There are people in pain, Misha. They are waiting for me. And if there are people in pain, it is my duty to care for them. But, Mama, you haven't slept in days. It's my duty! At night, she would sit with her husband's medical books, pouring over them. Mila Petrovna, you must get some rest. I will, I will. But I'm treating the schoolmaster's wife tomorrow. She's expecting next week, and the baby is breached, so I want to be sure that... She never rests. Never. But look how much younger she looks, how alive she is. Her color is back. She's eating again. Sergei loved that schoolmaster. I must do right by them. I must. I will not fail them. Healing has saved my life, and I will save others. Shall I keep the samovar on? I'll make you some tea. Uh, Yes. No. I don't care. I'm busy. Can't I help you, Mama? Please? I'd love to learn how to deliver a baby. It would help to relieve you. After all, you delivered two last week, remember? And with one, you were up all night. Nonsense, Anya. Don't even suggest it. Why not? I want to help you. Because they come to me, Anya. To me. They expect me to help them, to heal them, and I can't let them down. You'll never let them down. You're Mila the healer to all the village. And beyond. They come from miles to see her, from as far as Zucchino. Mama, there's a young woman who's begging to see you. She's brought her sick baby. I told her it's too late that you've been working all day and she should come back in the morning. Send her in. But Mama... Send her in, I said. That baby... Who knows what ails it? After all, it's a life. Begging your extreme pardon, Mila Petrovna, but I... Enough. Sit down. Put the baby down here. He's burning up. Misha, quickly, run to the chemist's. Mama, can I help you? Not now, Anya. What is it, Mila Petrovna? Please tell me. How long has he had this fever? Since yesterday morning. Why didn't you bring him earlier, Agafya? But I did. I did. I came last evening, but Anya, your daughter, said I should come back today, that you were exhausted, that you had been working day and night, and so I went home, and I was up all night with Grisha, and he was coughing and coughing, and I fell asleep with exhaustion, and by the time I awoke, it was afternoon, and he was so sick, he had stopped crying. Forgive me. Forgive me. I've murdered my child. I've murdered him. Calm down, my dear. I've sent for some medicine. Misha, my assistant, will be back soon. You'll make him better, Mila Petrovna, won't you? If anyone can, you can. I have faith. After all, you're Mila the healer. Here's the medicine, Mila Petrovna. Don't worry, little mother. Mila the healer will save your Grisha. Mila Petrovna held that baby all night long. And at dawn, the fever had subsided. Another miracle. God bless you, Mila Petrovna. God bless you. Mama? Mama, are you all right? Are you, Mama? Is there anything I can do? Mama, why are you looking at me like that? She says she was here yesterday. Who? Who do you mean, Mama? You know who I mean. I... I don't, honestly, Mama. Agafia. 
Agafia. What about Agafia, Mama? She says she was here yesterday. When? You know when, Anya. You know. Agafia said it herself. She came yesterday with little Grisha because he had spiked a fever. She came to see me, as well she should have. His fever was 106. That baby almost died. But Mama... She came, Anya. She came to see me. And you... You told her to go home. You said that. You were exhausted, Mama. You could hardly stand. You hadn't slept the night before. You were working all day and you hadn't eaten. You were pale. Your hands were trembling. They were. They were. I saw them. Quiet, Avdotya. You said that she should come back the next day, Anya. The next day. Do you know what that means, Anya? I... I was exhausted too, Mama. I hadn't slept either. Remember, I was up trying to help, trying to... That means... Are you listening? That the baby could have died. Would have died, Anya. No, 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 no. I can't hear it. I can't... That baby would have died had not Misha... My capable, trusted, ever-loyal Misha run to Nikita the chemist, who happened to be open, I repeat, just happened to be open. Nikita was about to go to bed. Luckily, he wasn't asleep, and... I said quiet! That baby would have died, Anya. Do you hear me? Died! Stop it! I can't bear it! I can't! Everyone in this village needs me. Trusts me. I've never let a patient down. Ever. Ever. Of course not, Mama, but you're only human. Human? Human? What does that have to do with it? I care for everyone in this village and beyond. They come to me for miles and miles, and I don't even have a medical degree. I've learned everything I know at your father's side. And now I stay up nights and read his books and teach myself. And do you know what? What? In the two years I have been practicing, I have never, never let a patient down. Ever. I have cured every single soul that has come to see me day or night. Do you know what it would have meant if that baby had died? To my work? To my reputation? Mama, forgive me, please. I was only trying to protect you. For God's sake, believe me. Of course you were, of course. Will you keep quiet? Listen to me, Anya. If that baby had died, it would have been your fault. Yours! Get out of my sight. Mamila Petrovna... Leave me! I will not fail one of my patients ever. As God is my witness. Do you hear me? Yes, yes Mila, Mila Petrovna. Petrovna. Do you hear me? Go. I never want to see you again. And after that night, Mila Petrovna worked harder than ever before. Patients came from Babkino, from Tutkino ten miles away, and even from Saskino over fifty miles away to be treated by Mila the healer. Time passed. Has she heard from Anya? Not a word. It's been over a year since she's gone. God bless that child. I don't sleep at night worrying. She could be at her cousin Alyosha's in Yaroslavl. Or her aunt Fedoja, the sister of Sergei Sergeyevich, her late father. Rest his soul. She lives in Perm. But she doesn't write our Anya, not a word. I wait for the post every day. Avdotya, go out to the kitchen and make this poor workman some cabbage soup. 
He hasn't eaten in days. Yes, Mila Petrovna, right away. I'll try to ask Mila Petrovna, but she has forbidden the mention of Anya's name in the house. Oh, the things we do to the ones we love. Abdotya! You haven't gone yet? Right away, mistress, right away. So she never mentioned Anya's name to her mother. Never. Then, one day... Where is this healer that they talk about? I'm sorry, sir. You can't come in here. You have to wait your turn. There are 40 people in the waiting room before you, and Mila Petrovna is busy with a sick baby. I don't care how sick that child is. Now, really, sir... I've come all the way from Sislov. Do you know how long that is, young fellow? Well, do you? I really don't, sir. Well, I'll tell you then. Seventy miles. That's right, seventy miles, and it's been raining for three days. The cart got stuck in the mud, and we had to have the peasants push it out. And it's caused even more pain to my leg, more than I can endure. I've been sitting for days in that damn cart, and I'm not going to wait one minute longer. Please, sir, let me at least... Where is she? Out of my way, young man. What's all this commotion? Mila Petrovna, really, I tried to explain to this gentleman... I demand to be seen. Now! Now, really, sir, you can't talk to Mila Petrovna this way. All right, Misha, all right. I'll handle this. How can I help you? Yegor Ivanich, to you, woman. I've traveled 70 miles for three days over the worst roads. So you better be as good as they say you are. Now, sir... I can handle this, Misha, really. What seems to be your problem? This accursed leg. Damn it. It's been like this for a week. Sit here. Uh... It appears to be an abscess. Did you scratch your leg? I cut myself on the wire fence around Dmitri Alexandrovich's estate, trying to chase some damned peasants away. I washed it off and kept it clean. I thought it would heal but it seems to be getting worse. Does it hurt here? Ah! I see. The infection is advancing. It will have to be lanced immediately. What does that mean? We cut it open and let the infection drain. What? Misha, my assistant, is very skilled. He will help me. I don't have a lot of time, you know. I have the estate to manage. If we don't do something quickly, the infection could spread. You could get lockjaw. There might be some who'd appreciate it. Then get it over with, damn it. Quickly, Abdotya. A knife, a candle, and a bowl of warm water. We'll drain and cauterize it, and then we'll keep treating it with warm compresses. You won't be able to travel for a few weeks until it heals. What do you mean? You'll have to stay here while we watch it. What do you mean, stay here? I'm the manager of Dmitri Alexandrovich's estate in Sislov. I have work to do. It's almost planting season. I can't stay here. I must return at once. Do your job, woman, and send me home. <laughs> really? Yegor Nikitsch? Yegor Ivanich! Damn it, woman! Yegor Ivanich, I urge you to comply with the treatment. You can stay here in our village. It will only be a week or two while we treat it daily with warm compresses. And where am I going to stay, huh? I don't know a soul in this godforsaken village. You can stay with Avdotya and her husband. What? I'm sure they will be pleased to have you as a guest in their home. After all, to help the ill and infirmed is our calling. Maybe it's yours. I'm a cook. Isn't that right, Avdotya? Yes, Mila Petrovna. And so it came to pass that Yegor Ivanich, the manager of a neighboring estate, came to our village and submitted himself to Mila Petrovna's care. Each day, Yegor Ivanich hobbled over to Mila Petrovna's infirmary for the warm compresses. She seemed to be getting used to his visits. You might say she even looked forward to them. Ow! Ow! That hurts. Steady, Yegor Ivanich, steady. It will heal, it will. I've been here five days, damn it. I've got to get back to my estate. Dmitri Alexandrovich needs me. It's been raining for days. The roads are impassable, so you'd be stuck here anyway. And Avdotya's hospitality isn't so bad, is it now? <laughs> She's the best cook in the village, so they say. He doesn't say no to my potato dumplings now, does he? Yesterday he had two servings. <laughs> Why the scowl, Yegor Ivanich? You're getting the best treatment in the province. 
There's no one that heals like Mila Petrovna. How is the leg today, Yegor Ivanich? Uh, better? Maybe a little better. Really? Well, I'm very glad to hear it, Yegor Ivanich. <laughs> and how are you finding your stay here, Yegor Ivanich? It's... It's all right. The rains have stopped. Soon you'll be able to walk around the village. Now, why would I do that? There's a lovely pond on the outskirts at the edge of a lovely dark wood. You'd like it very much, I think. <laughs> no, really. I strongly encourage you. It's not too far, and you'll exercise that leg. It will help it to heal. Well, we'll see about that. Would you like us to get word to your family that you'll be returning soon? Misha can write a letter to your wife. The postman will be here tomorrow. He has an excellent horse, and your wife should receive the letter in a few days. To whom should Yegor Ivanich address the letter? To Dmitri Alexandrovich. But what about your wife? I have no wife. She died five years ago. I see. What about your children? I'm sure they are concerned. I have no children. No children? I had a daughter. Once. She died. Did she? What did she die of? Cholera. The epidemic last year, you know. I know. It didn't reach our village here. What was... What was what? Your daughter's name. Vera? I... Yes? I... I think I died with her. I see. By the end of the third week, Yegor Ivanich came to the infirmary every day, whether his bandage needed changing or not. Mila Petrovna! Mila Petrovna! What? Yegor Ivanich is here. Oh, yes. Hello, Yegor Ivanich. How is that leg today? Not bad. Well, that's good to hear. I see you're able to get around better. Have you... Have I what? Walked around the village yet? A little. Did you walk down to the pond? I did. Is it still so shaded and so peaceful? Mila Petrovna. Yes? When is the last time you took a walk to that pond, Mila Petrovna? Me? <laughs> When would I have time to do such a thing? Mila Petrovna? You seem distracted today. No, I'm fine. Really, fine. We needn't change that bandage today. You'll be able to go home soon. I see. Mila Petrovna... Why do you stare out the window? Are you waiting for someone? Nonsense. What do you mean? I have work to do. Work! It's only that... It's only... what? Well, they say in the village... What do they say? They say... Well, what? They say that, well, that your husband, Sergei Sergeyevich, was a good doctor. But they say you are a greater healer, greater even than he, that you work tirelessly, day and night, that you have never failed to cure a patient. I see. They also say that you had a daughter. <sighs> Mila Petrovna, are you all right? Forgive me, I didn't. I was only saying that I heard that you had a daughter, too. Where is she now? She doesn't live here anymore. Why not? 
Where did she go? She... She was of no use to us here. And so she left. What do you mean, of no use? We are here to care for the sick. At any time, day or night. We do not waver. We do not rest. We heal. How long has she been gone? I don't remember. Don't you want to see your daughter again, Mila Petrovna? I told you. She was of no use to us here. Then finally, at the end of a month... I thank you, Mila Petrovna. You are a good healer. It is my work. Will you do something for me? What is that? I hear from Misha, your assistant, that you have received a letter. From your daughter. So he tells me. Will you tell me what the letter says? I... I have not opened it. Why not? Will you open the letter? When I'm ready. When are we ever ready, Mila Petrovna? Sometimes when we are ready, it's too late. You have a letter from your daughter. I won't be receiving one from mine. It's up to you, Mila Petrovna. It's up to you. Goodbye, Mila Petrovna. And so that day, in the infirmary, Mila Petrovna opened the letter from Anya. Dear Mama, forgive me for disappointing you, for not being a help to you in your work. You are a great healer, Mama. And more than anything in the world, I have wanted to help you to work by your side. I'm going to Petersburg, to the university, to study medicine. Aunt Fedosia will support my studies, and after I become a doctor, after I get my degree, I will return to our village. That is, if you will have me. And... We will heal together. Mila Petrovna smiled. She continued to work and care for the sick every day of her life. She became the greatest healer of the sick in the province. And she did not sit at the window any longer. Meal of the Healer was recorded at Jack Straw Cultural Center. It was directed and produced by Gavin Reeb and the Seagull Project and engineered by Daniel Gunther. The cast includes Julie Briskman, Charles Leggett, Ayo Toshinde, David Quicksall, and Alexandra Tavares. <laughs>